Hello and welcome. This is EDC with Oaken and Kane. I'm Kane, coming in today in the living room. Unfortunately, Oaken couldn't be here, but I want to go ahead and start off by saying thank you so much to all the great subscribers out there. We have finally reached the milestone of a thousand subscribers. We are very pleased about that. And we want to continue to bring you good content, continue to grow the channel. So please like and subscribe to the videos. Um, I think currently, you know, looking at the statistics, we have about 80 to 85 percent that are watching some of the videos, but that aren't subscribing. So it would really help if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe, leave us some comments. Um, I know a little, a couple of you are upset because we're not doing all the videos together. Obviously, we try um, to do as many as possible, but we feel like if we can continue to bring some kind of content. Um, Several times a week, we're doing pretty good. We live about 40 to 45 minutes apart. Obviously, that's not optimal, but we will continue to get together, if not weekly, um, every other week or so. But without further ado, today we are talking about this little beauty. This is coming to us from the Pass Around group. Thank you guys. It's been an amazing group helping us see some of these knives that we wouldn't really normally see on the channel. So, a big shout out to the Apex Passeron group. But today we have the Monterey Bay EZC 1.5. So this knife made, like I said, by Monterey Bay Knives. A small three inch knife liner lock. And it was designed by, let's see if I can get this on camera. No other than Ray Laconica. He does a lot of great, simple designs, very similar to this. Monterey Bay has come out with several different versions of this. They started out with the 1.0. This is the 1.5. And then the 2.0, which I believe is a titanium integral, is around $285. This one is in the middle, or starts at around $180 for this carbon fiber version, as you see here. So... Let's talk a little bit more about the knife, the size, the specs, and do a couple comparisons. First off, let's get the size comparison or the specs out of the way. This is around a three inch blade. Looks like the cutting edge is about 2.75. Overall length around 6.75 with a handle length of probably 3.75. show you some macro pictures of the blade. I really like how Ray Laconico usually puts his um, insignia or his logo on the spine of the blade. It's very neat, usually keeps the rest of the blade pretty sterile and clean, yet you can see it right here, just a nice little addition, and you know you're getting a good design from a great designer. Um, this version is a three inch blade, like I said, very much like a leaf shape type blade. Features a full flat grind. Um, I'm not gonna measure behind the edge because this has been passed around several times. I'm not sure if this is a factory edge or not, but great slicer nonetheless. Um, pretty decent tip as well. So very nice looking. A lot of times he has a very simple design but fits in your hand very nicely. Feels really good, no hot spots. And he usually does some kind of cutout like this, which adds a little bit to the aesthetic so that's not just a plain oval um, for the design. So, this is a flipper. Like I said, it is a frame lock. Um, also, this is an M390 blade. So, great cutting performance, great corrosion resistance. There's the M390 uh, Monterey Bay Knives logo, which is very nice looking too, if I might add. The grind lines on this blade, very nice, very appealing to the eye. Sort of like a satin type finish on this, not a stone wash or anything like that. The clip is a titanium clip, not fully deep carry, but doesn't really bother me too much. Um, nothing to get hung on there, rides nice in the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and get the pocket simulator so that you can see really quick how it does ride in the pocket 
So that sticks out sort of like that, not too bad, um, less than a thumb, which is pretty nice. Very lightweight knife, um, around 2.8 ounces, we'll test that out as well. Um, but a nice, good looking titanium pocket clip, um, so really a nice gentleman's carry. I can see myself wearing this with a suit or to the office, three inch blade, you're not going to scare anyone by shooting it out or anything. Um, so just a very good looking knife. They call this handle material marble carbon fiber. Um, I can see, I guess how you can see is marble. I, I go back and forth whether it would be called shred or marble, but on the website it says marble carbon fiber, so we will go with that. Um, it is a very good looking appealing carbon fiber with a nice chatoyance to it, uh, as Dr. Frankie would say. There are a few voids with this type of carbon fiber. It is pretty common, as you can see there. Um, just a few little voids, but overall it doesn't really take much away from the aesthetic, especially if you get a little bit farther away from your eye. But just a beautifully well-designed knife. Um, also has the carbon fiber little backspacer here. Very easy to open up. Good detent. Rockets out every time. And for the size and the lightweight blade, it actually has a pretty good drop shut action. Um, so the detent is very much dialed in. When it goes out, it pushes. It's You can do light switch or push button and it just works um, very seamlessly. Not going to misfire on this one. So let me get myself stopped talking and we'll do a couple size comparisons. So here we have the Spyderco Sage 5. Let's get this rug out of the way. All right. And the tenacious. What else we got here? A few small knives, the mini bug out, which is pretty similar, just a little bit smaller. And the Kaiser mini sheepdog. All good knives. Um, these are very comparable. This is very classy looking to me. They now have a carbon fiber full version of the bug out straight from Benchmade, uh, which is nice. Hopefully we'll get to check that out soon. Let's do a few more comparisons. Here we have the Kaiser Beg Letter, which is a similar looking carbon fiber. Um, both really good looking knives. This carbon fiber shines just a little bit more, catches the light just slightly more, which is very nice. Um, but both great looking knives. This one's much more fingerprint magnet on the blade compared to the Monterey Bay knives. Then we'll do, let's do a Spyderco Smock and the Capara. Both larger than this version here. So, now that we've done some of the size comparisons, this is running, let's see if we can see it, on bearings, um, very smooth action, just like I said, shoots right out, great detent, um, just a very overall great knife. For the Ergos, um, I can get an easy four finger grip on this, guys with bigger hands might I'd say they could get most, usually their pinky on as well, um, but very comfortable. I don't really feel the clip much. It's rounded nicely, so no real hot spots there. Um, but just a great knife. Not a very hard, hard use knife. There's no jimping here, so it can be slippery if you push hard, but um, just a really good feeling knife. Every once in a while I feel this if I'm squeezing very hard, but overall very comfortable in the hand in really any way that you hold it. So I'm very pleased with it so far. I think it's a very classy knife. I like it a lot more um, than I was thinking, especially when I got it in hand. I'd, I think these are out of stock right now. I was hoping to pick one up, um, but just a beautiful knife that I think, like I said, you can carry it to work, um, dress it up, dress it down, just a very nice knife. Good slicer being that full flat grind for the entire blade. Um, and just very appealing to the eye. So 
design and execution. Like I said, I think there's a lot to say about being able to do a simple design and do it well. Um, it's much less likely that this will go out of style. Um, just a classic blade shape, um, very simple handle, beautiful materials with the shred carbon fiber M390 blade, three inches, titanium um, pocket clip. It's just a lot of good things with this knife. Uh, so definitely recommend it. I think it is a good design, a great execution from Monterey Bay Knives. And at about $180, I think it's a great value. Um, a lot of these knives are getting into the 200s, 250s. So being $180 for this price point, I think is a great, great price point for this knife. I don't really see many weaknesses um, on this knife. Overall, I think I really just have mainly positives. It's not a abuse type knife. I wouldn't go and try to, you know, cut down a forest with this, but that's not its intended use anyways. So overall, I would give this definitely two thumbs up. If you can, pick one up. I would try to get one in hand. The EZC 2.0, like I said, is an integral um, titanium version, which is nice. This also, um, they just released Monterey Bay Knives, another design very similar. Um, the E, I believe it's the EWC, but it's a double detent um, slip joint to where it flips here and then the blade pushes back. But they have a sway back version, which is a very interesting blade shape, um, but actually looks pretty good. So you can check that out. I think those are currently at $180 for the same carbon fiber, titanium, um, or a, I think a raindrop carbon fiber as well. But all great knives, great options for Monterey Bay knives. Please, like I said, if you like our content, continue to follow us. We'll continue to bring you some good content. Now that we've reached 1,000 subscribers, we're really excited to start doing a giveaway as well as do a first live stream now that we can finally do it on the mobile device. So, again, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we hope you have a very good rest of your week, and we'll be back later. But have a good time, and time to get out of the living room. Peace.